Hello everybody, I am Nico D. This is the Mixtile Blade 3. So this is a Rockchip RK3588 ARM SBC. So this has got a few cool design choices. So this is mainly designed for clusters, but it can also be used for desktop use and for server tasks. So for clusters it has got this. So this is an adapter board that can fit onto here. All right, I, I have to unscrew these screws to fit it onto there so I cannot show how it fits. With this you can connect multiple boards to each other, but about the cluster functionality I cannot talk yet. So uh, we will look at that in a later video, but the cluster board is pretty cool. So you can power the board with this, then you have got your two USB-C ports free. Uh, you have got an extra SATA port over here and then you can cluster your boards. That for a later video. So it is not only good for clusters, but it is also good for desktop tasks. So with this NVMe adapter, you can fit an NVMe to it. So you also have got this case, the black case. So there is a fan in here. The black case, I'm not such a fan of the big black case. I rather use this heatsink and put it on top of the black case. And that way it runs cool enough, it doesn't overheat. That way when you put this heatsink on the table, then it does overheat. So that makes a big difference. Also with the black case, how you orientate it also makes a big difference. So if you put it like this with the hot side down on your table, then it will overheat. If you put it like this with the hot side up, so actually it is upside down, upside down, it doesn't overheat. So that is very important to know. Just one thing, so it does have got a fan. I will show you all the temperatures later on, but the fan isn't that great. So if you leave it like this, the temperatures are just the same as if you leave the fan out and you put it like this. So that is something, it does look very nice with the case. So I've gotten this from Mixtile and I first wanted to make a super nice with this. So I also have got this uh, six times SATA M.2 adapter. So with this I would have got six times SATA and I also have got this. So two times SATA for a MIDI PCIe. So it also has got MIDI PCIe. So that also works so like that. So I would have got eight SATA connectors. Now I have got three different NAS devices and I would have put them all into one, but I changed my mind. I will use this as my main desktop instead. So until now I was using the Mikotronics R58 Mini as my main desktop, but that doesn't have NVMe. It doesn't have 2.5 gigabit ethernet. This has got two times 2.5 gigabit ethernet. So I am using this now as my main desktop. I will also use it as a fast NAS so uh, to connect with my PC to it. So for that it is really great. I am very happy to have it. So let's go to the specs. Here we go! So let's start on the top left and go clockwise. So first we see the U.2 port. So this has got pins for 12 volt DC. 4 lanes PCIe Gen 3 and SATA. Then we see the 30 pin GPIO header. Then a debug UART. Next to that there are 4 debug switches. So these are important. So for example if you want to put the board into micro mode. Then you set switch 4 to 1. They are very small and I have to use a giant magnifying glass with a small screwdriver to turn them on or off. Then we see the mini PCIe port, so this is PCIe Gen 2, one lane, then the micro SD card reader, so it is great, it has got a micro SD card reader, a lot of new RK3588 boards do not have it, but there is one thing, it is pointed inwards, so that makes it that it is not accessible when you use the black metal case. Then we see 2 times USB type C. So both of these can do USB 3 speeds and also have DP for extra displays. But the first one is for power if you can't power it on another way. And then the second one is the only available USB port. 
it would have been nice if there was one full size type A port. But well, there is only so much room on a board. Then we have got two HDMI ports. So the top HDMI port is HDMI out, the bottom HDMI port is HDMI in. Then we have got 2 times 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Next to that we have got the fan connector. And then on the bottom of the board there is the MIPI CSI connector for a camera. And of course the SOC, the RAM and EMMC. So the CPU is the Orca 3588 with 4 times A76 at 2.4 GHz. This can be a bit lower, but you can overclock it to 2.4 GHz. And then 4 times A55 at 1.8 GHz. The GPU is an ARM Mali G610 MP4. It has got an NPU AI accelerator of 6 tops. It can have up to 32 GB of memory. And the EMMC can be up to 256 gigabytes. So this is how I use it. So I use a USB Type-C hub. It also has got an HDMI port. So I could do dual display. And I use my mini PCIe to SATA adapter for my SATA SSD. And the aluminium heatsink on top of the black metal case. And here you can see me put it into the black case. So I don't dislike the black case. I do dislike the fan, so one issue with the black case is it is the lid that keeps contact with the CPU, so the lid gets very hot, but the rest of the case doesn't get as hot, because the contact between the lid and the case ain't that great. It would have been better if the CPU was on the case side, and as I said it cools better when it is upside down, so when the letters are unreadable. And now let's show you the fan noise. It isn't an efficient fan. It is blowing inside of the case and not where the sock is. For a server room this is no problem. But I do not like my arm devices to use a fan. So the fan is inside of this tunnel, so it sucks air in here and it blows it out over there. So actually the fan is cooling this side, but it is this that cools the CPU. So that is why it isn't very efficient. We are 8 minutes into the video and I haven't told you yet that I am using Armbian on it. So that was why I was waiting to review this board, because I wanted Armbian. Ricardo Pardini and Moncabriat have done a great job with that. So it works just as any other Orca 3588. I have got one small problem, that is that my SATA doesn't wake up at boot. I have to unplug the power plug and plug it back in. And then it works, but that is something that I use and that isn't default. So for the images we search for Ricardo Pardini Armbian releases. And here we've got it. Here is the Mixtar Blade 3 image. So every now and then he updates with new images. So check there. Maybe in the future you can find it on the download page from Armbian. And Monka also has his builds on this web address. So this Jami image comes with VPU and GPU drivers. And something that I am very proud of. It also comes with an Armbian gaming script. So all you have to do is type NicoD, press tab. And there it is NicoD-Armbian-Gaming. This script downloads the latest version of Armbian gaming. And with that you can install all the gaming apps. Thank you very much Ricardo for that. Very happy with it. So I can play all the games that I'm used to on RK3588. I made a few videos where I show my favorite games on RK3588. If you are interested also watch those. And of course the video playback on the RK3588 is perfect with the VPU drivers from Amazing Fate. Hello everybody, I am Nico D and these are 5 more awesome games that run on the, on the RK3588. 
So here I am using the Micotronics R58 Mini. I am using Armbian Jammy with the GNOME desktop. The pan fork drivers are installed. And also the Rockchip Blob GPU driver. I've installed all the tools with Armbian Gaming. So a lot more has been added like PS1 emulation and PS2 emulation. So here so here I am using a 1080p display and I can play 4K without a problem. Normally I use my 4K display and watch YouTube at 1440p. That's good enough for me. Hello everybody, I am Nico D. So this is the Makeotronics R58 mini PC. So and also watch my video about my full setup of Monka's Armbeam GNOME. So this is the setup that I'm using on this device. Most of the things that I show in this video Monka already implemented. So if you use his images then the only difference is the layout. But otherwise it has got all the apps that I'm using. Here is a power consumption. So with nothing connected in idle it consumes 3 watts. When I connected the 2.5 gigabit ethernet it was 3.8 watts. With my USB type C hub and keyboard dongle it was 5.8 watts. And then with everything connected and all CPU cores maxed out it was 12 watts. So the difference between maxed out and idle is 6 watts. That is a great performance per watt compared to older SBCs. Certainly compared to the Raspberry Pi 4. And here are the transfer rates. So with USB 3 with SATA adapter I get 393.3 megabytes a second read and 390.8 megabytes a second write. With my mini PCIe SATA adapter I get 408.2 megabytes a second read but only 273.7 megabytes a second write. Not sure why that is. It starts at 400 megabytes and then goes down at a half. Then my Samsung 980 NVMe. 3.2 gigabytes a second reads, but only 624.5 megabytes a second writes. Also not sure why that is. And then the 128 gigabyte eMMC does 168 megabytes a second reads and 228.7 megabytes a second writes. A bit weird that the write speeds are faster than the read speeds. To check the temperatures I use my Nico D Blender benchmark and I wrote a little script for it. So this does 10 times the Nico D Blender benchmark after each other. So that's about 34 minutes of CPUs maxed out. The idle temperature was best with the aluminium heatsink on top of the black case. Then it was 47 degrees Celsius and maxed out it went to 80 degrees Celsius. When it is not on the black case. The maxed out temperature is 83 degrees Celsius, but it is throttling the same temperature in the black case without the fan. But with the sock on top of the table, it is also going to 84 degrees Celsius and heavy throttling. With the fan it goes to 81 degrees Celsius, so it doesn't make so much difference. And if you turn it around without the fan it is also 81 degrees Celsius. So if you use the fan with the hot plate on the table it is the same as not using the fan and turning it around. And here are the benchmarks. Just read them. I don't have to say it all. The Mixtile Blade 3 is the fastest with the RK3588. Then the Kadas Fim 4. Then the Odroid N2 Plus and then the RK3399 with station P1. And the Raspberry Pi 4 would be about the same as RK3399. But I don't have any. So that will be it for today. If you want to know anything more ask here below in the comments. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Like the video. See you all later. Bye.